one they can ambush stuff coming by them swimming by them and two they're kind of out of the sun and remember earlier i mentioned in another video that fish don't have eyelids so that's what they do they hide out in the shade all right here's shorelines if you see a shoreline like this you can see the trees generally this shoreline contour is going to follow that down into the water keeping cast king lit joe pockets and pockets on top of pockets and more pockets what is going on guys thanks for tuning in to another edition of keeping cast king lit with me joel p that's right so today you know we're out here at uh yellowtail dam otherwise known as bighorn canyon um and this place is massive and it's also very beautiful as you can see the wife's moving around rocking the boat don't rock the boat baby yeah uh, i got my wife with me today and we're out here trying to small mouth you know catch some small mouth fish or a small mouth bass rather so uh you know i'm using kind of a few different things and i will kind of go through what i'm using and how i'm doing it um so i have about i have three four rods that i brought with me today um and you know, one of them I have a jerk bait on. Uh, the other one I have a crank bait on. It dives about 14 and a half feet. And then I also brought a setup for a drop shot, which I will be doing later on. But one of the things that I'm actually doing, I'm trying to get my bait untangled here. Um, one of the things I actually like doing for these smallmouth here. And, so if you guys can see behind me, let me kind of explain this part of it to you first, and then you'll probably understand. So let's get the big picture here. So what you see here is, you know, this is basically a canyon, and it was filled up. Uh, it was dammed and turned into a lake, but it's actually a river. Um, and it starts in Wyoming and runs, you know, clear into Montana. And one of the things, if you notice behind me, you've got areas where you have uh chunk rock and slab rock that have fallen off and actually are in the water and then you have places the chunk rock and stuff is that kind of slopes down into the water so one of the things i'm doing is let me grab my spinner bait here is i'm throwing the spinner bait and i'm kind of letting it there it is throwing the spinner bait and i'm kind of letting it fall down you know and i'm reeling it nice and slow now i do understand that sometimes you know, one of the great things about fishing is we kind of make our own. Oh, sorry about that. One of the great things about fishing is we kind of have to figure stuff out on our own and find what works for us. And, you know, we're on our bodies, home bodies of water. And this is one of the things that works. So you can see I'm using a willow leaf blade. You know, it's a twin blade. Um, it's got the little copper or brass, and then it's got the bigger silver one on it. I'm not using a trailer on this. Just the skirt on it is perfectly good. And what's happening is I'm casting towards the shoreline and then I kind of just let it fall you know, and I'm reeling it. And nine times out of 10, some of the fish that I'm catching are gonna be a little small, but hey, at least I know there's fish there. And secondly, you know, there's when I start reeling it in, let it fall a little bit deeper on occasion, I do hook some big ones doing this. So uh, I'm gonna keep doing that. And then, you know, I might switch it up a little bit and then use a crankbait or the jerk bait actually um i prefer using that a lot more and i'll cast out probably anywhere from 20 to 30 feet away from the shoreline and actually watch those fish come up um you know sometimes i haven't hit an area yet where there's some big ones um that are that i'm pulling up yet so um, i know it's going to happen though so that's what i'm looking for um and let's talk a little bit about that setup that i've got going on with that so you know, I'm actually using the, the Speed Demon crankbait rod, a seven foot rod, uh, moderate, moderate action, and it's a light power. But one of the things I like, one of the reasons why I like using this is I can actually get the bait down fairly deep. Um, and this I actually have, I think I have like 15 pound, 15 pound, <laughs> wife's moving around, rocking the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things I like doing is, why I like using this rod is, you know, there's a point in time where I actually can see the fish um, coming up and I can kind of, you know, see what's going on and I twitch it a little bit, not twitch it, reel it in a little bit, 
and just give it little twitches. And I can actually get them to bite that way. Um, and the one thing about using this rod, this particular action, is I'm not gonna jerk it out of their mouth. So when they bite it, this loads up on its own. You know, and it loads up pretty good and it sets the hooks on them. Here, let me show you the action on this rod. I don't know if you can be able to see it here. But you can see when they hit what happens here. Maybe. Maybe you can see when they hit what happens. Let's try that. Hopefully you guys can see this. Maybe. But you guys can see that, you know, that bend. So I gotta do a little bow control here. I didn't have my spot lock turned up enough and we're drifting way past where we're supposed to be or where I want to be. Alrighty, so I kind of got set up, I think, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do some cast and see what we can pull in. Like I was saying, you know, when you... So the way I'm working this off of these rocks is... I'll just kind of let it flutter down because the action that it's giving those, uh, those blades as it's falling, you know, it'll still spin a little bit. And I'll reel a little, let it fall, reel a little, you know, kind of pump it. But then I also let it fall a little, you know, and that's kind of when I'm getting my bites. And I'm trying to, if you look, here, I'll see if I can get the camera positioned right here. All right, so here. So if you picture the shoreline all the way up there, okay, and what you're going to try to picture is that what's underneath the water kind of mirrors this, you know, that same slope down. And, you know, that's when I'm fishing it, you know, I'm actually like say bouncing it off you know every few of the rocks around you know and then you look at all the rocks that are on the shoreline how they have the crevices and the holes well that's where some of these fish are going to hide out because you know that's one they can ambush stuff coming by them swimming by them and two they're kind of out of the sun and remember earlier i mentioned in another video that fish don't have eyelids so that's what they do they hide out in the shade and you know, that's kind of what I'm looking for, but I'm also following, you know, getting these fish that are, are kind of, you know, hiding out in these places. So that's what I'm doing. You know, give it a try. See if it works for you. It works for me here. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. And then I'll probably, like I said, later on today, you know, pitch around a uh, jerk bait or, or something else to that nature. So anyway, all right, we'll catch you guys in a little bit. Yeah, you do it, you do it. Watch out, Hal. I don't want to get slapped by fish. <laughs> Man. Come on. Ash. Bad idea, bad idea. Oof, bad idea. Should have brought that net, damn it. That's not bad. It's not, yeah, a little smaller <laughs> than I thought it was. Gross. 
<laughs> I'm gonna put this one in that bag. All right, guys, we are back in the fishing hole. That's right, we are back. And so it was fun. It was fun on the water. Had a good day. Caught some smallmouth bass. That was fun too. Didn't get skunk. I hate getting skunk. And yeah, getting skunk's not good because you got to use like tomato juice and stuff to get the smell off, and it takes forever. And then you know people start complaining. And yeah, it's just. So anyhow, all right, let's go over some really quick things I was trying to describe to you guys or help you guys understand on the water. All right, one of which is shoreline. So if you do not have electronics on your boat or kayak or whatever, and you want to have a general idea or you, uh, kind of a, a mental image of what things kind of look like under the water, um, minus like the the lay downs and stuff like that. Um, you're going to look at the shoreline because the shoreline is going to tell you a lot about what it looks like under the water. All right. Generally. Now, this is my kind of way of thinking about it. I drew some pictures. We're going to go through some through some surfs through some shoreline stuff here. All right. Here's shorelines. If you see a shoreline like this, you can see the trees. Generally, this shoreline contour is going to follow that down into the water. There's the water. There's a the water line, surface of the water. That's going to follow it down. You see a shoreline like this. Um, you're, you'll find places like this on a lot of your lakes. You know, it's kind of flat. Generally, that's going to be all the way down in the water. Sometimes this might even taper out a little bit further and then just get deeper and deeper. But it, you're going to generally have something like this. If you see something like this, wherever you fish, and if you have uh, rock cliffs that people like to dive off of, jump off of, don't dive. Just jump. Don't even jump. Anyway, this is the this is the, the contour. You know, you got that cliff. Well, that's going to carry on through the water, you know. On um, the lake I was fishing that I took you guys with me on, this, you know, there's areas like this. There's like all these different areas in, in one area that I was fishing, Okay. Or one lake I was fishing. So I targeted this kind of shoreline today and this a little bit. Now, the majority of the fish I was catching was on this kind of shoreline. And I have electronics on the boat too, so it makes it a little easier for me as well. But at a glance, like I said, I was just I was fishing mostly this area and a little bit of this area. This area I was throwing a uh, crankbait as well as a spinner bait. This area is throwing a jerk bait or it's jerk baiting up here too. So anyway, one of the things you're going to want to do really quick is get to know this because this is what you could use on the water to help you out when you're fight when you're fishing. So you know what kind of shorelines you're fishing. Okay. Bam, bam, bam. There's going to be certain times a year where you're going to fish these as opposed to this or this as opposed to this or this. Oh, this shoreline here is more like a river. So bank anglers, these, these work for you as well. But this is more like kind of a river, you know. That, all right. So anyhow, yeah, that's it. Um, The other thing too, the other thing I was doing was I was using a spinner bait. But I was fishing this spinner bait, not like I would probably normally fish a spinner bait. And what I mean by that, spinner baits are kind of subsurface uh, lures and the they attract the fish with sound they also attract the fish with a little flash um you get your sound and your flash through uh through your your, your spinners and there's different types of them we'll go over the different types uh, at a later date um but one of the things that were triggering the bites for me and the way i was fishing it and where i was fishing it once again bam picture yep that's me that's the boat there's my rod there's my line there's the shoreline so what I was doing was taking the spinner bait, casting it way over to the shoreline. I'd reel it a little bit, let it fall. Reel it, let it fall, reel it, let it fall. And I was fishing, I'd say with, I was fishing the spinner bait probably within 10 feet of water maybe. And that's where I was getting all my bites. And the reason why I, I believe I was getting my bites is picture this. So normally you throw a spinner bait, you cast it, you reel it. Your spinners would be kind of like this running, right? And what I was doing was, by the way I was fishing it, I'd let it do this a little bit. And then by letting it fall, it'd go like that. And that's kind of what I was doing. And that's where I was catching my fish. 
is on the fall. And that's how you do it. So don't be afraid to try new things. Sometimes you're gonna fish a lure a certain way that's gonna catch you bite, get you bites, and sometimes you're not. You can try everything you can think of, and at that point, if you don't catch something, change it up, use a different color, do whatever, but you'll get bit. So don't be stuck fishing a certain way. Step outside the norm. That's what I'm trying to say. Step outside the norm. Um, be a rebel. Oh yeah, be a rebel. Someone tells you you can't do it. All right. All right. I'm out. We'll see you guys on the next episode of Keeping Cast King Lit with Joe P. Hey, I hope you guys had fun and I'll take you out again. This time when we go out, we're going to have to bundle up because it's starting to get a little chillier. All right. We'll see you guys. It was fun. Come back again.